Professor Florida, you were the keynote speaker today. Um, what was the main thrust of your message? Well, I think picking up on the fantastic report on the state of the valley, the fact that the valley is at this incredible turning point or inflection point in its history. You know, it had a good thing going, it has a good thing going as being a center of technology and actually attracting talent from around the world. Uh, but now the state's in terrible shape and the federal government and the nation's in a crisis. How does the valley reposition itself? And I think uh, what I wanted to communicate is it's not just about technology and entrepreneurship. It's bigger than that. It's about building a full creative economy, harnessing the arts and culture and entertainment community, fusing hardware, software, content, and technology, but also digging down deep and making sure we reach out to the millions and millions of people who currently aren't participating in the creative economy, who toil in service jobs or even in manufacturing jobs, how we tap and harness their creative energy and build better jobs uh, for them. I think also addressing the question of affordable housing, transit, creating a better, uh, more sustainable place to live. And one of the challenges I, I, I talked about, and I think is critical, uh, the future of the Valley will be more than just inventing new technologies. It'll be about inventing new lifestyles. And I think what better place to do that than the greater Bay Area, which has been at the forefront of popular culture and the invention of new lifestyle trends for all of my life, and I'm 52. So fusing that with technology, um, suburbanization really was the thing that pulled us out of the last economic crisis. Explain to me a little what you mean by the creative class. Well, the creative class is bigger than just technologists. And when, when I was studying economic growth, a lot of folks were talking about how technology and innovation and high-tech companies drive growth. They're only about 6% of our economy. So I wanted to look at a broader group of highly talented, skilled, and ambitious people. So obviously that's scientists and techies and entrepreneurs, but it's also artists and musicians and culturally creative people and knowledge workers who work in the professions. All told, that's about 40 million Americans. That's a third of our workforce. And we actually looked at the composition of the creative economy and the creative class for the Silicon Valley, the metro area. It's 44% of your entire workforce. That's probably the highest in all of the United States and all of North America. 44% of your workforce, 400,000 people in this region currently work in this creative class. That's the growth force. That's the real growth factor. That's a high wage earning, value adding group of our time. Explain to me just a little what you mean by your bohemian index. What, what does that actually mean? Well, one of the things I really wanted to figure out is where this innovative and entrepreneurial spark that we see in places like the Silicon Valley or Austin, Texas or Seattle, Washington comes from. And I like history. I'm kind of a history buff and I like music. So I started to look at the history of these places and I noticed that even before the Silicon Valley was a tech center, it was a center of popular culture. It was a center of music. The Grateful Dead started, and of course, right down the road in Palo Alto, but all of the musical ferment with the Jefferson Airplane and Big Brother and the Holding Company, same thing I saw in Austin, Texas. Before it became a tech center, there was Willie Nelson and singer-songwriters in Seattle, home to Jimi Hendrix and Nirvana. What, what I think that indicates and why we created the Bohemian Factor, places that are open-minded with regard to cultural trends that allow, that enable musicians to make a go, become entrepreneurial, form these little startup companies called bands. There's something in their economic DNA that also enables them to attract entrepreneurially technology-oriented people. And I know enough about this valley to remember the old homebrew club and the old inventors messing around on their machines trying to make them play Beatles songs. So always in our culture has been Waz, after he leaves Apple, going on to form the Waz Fest. So always in our culture, between technology and music, there's been this incredible kind of mutual joint stimulation. So what we found is places that had more bohemians, more working artists and musicians and culturally creative people tended to have higher rates of innovation and higher rates of uh, new company formation. You also talked in terms of uh, migration. Are we in danger of losing some of our uh, best people to various parts of the country or to other countries? Well, I, 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 I think there's two things going on. One, I think what you're seeing in the Valley now is that some of the people who are having an economic hard time being forced out. And that's tragic because we're losing a lot of the underlying infrastructure of the economy and the service economy. And they're being forced just from an affordability standpoint to go to places where they can make a go. I think on the high end, where that competition for the top entrepreneurs and innovators, the great scientists and technologists, which always came, maybe they went to greater Boston, to Harvard or MIT, but generally speaking, poured in from India and China and all over the world. I think what's happened is it's not so much a U.S. competition. I think these emerging centers of the world whether that's uh, Shanghai and Beijing, whether that's parts of Mumbai and Bangalore, whether that's the Australians now seeing young university students as a key way to build their economy. Or, you know, I was recruited, and I talked about this today, 
I'm an American, grew up in America, born in Newark, New Jersey. I was recruited with a great research package. I didn't go too far. I moved to the University of Toronto. But up in Canada, the, the need to harness talent, to attract the best scientists from India and China, the emerging economies. So I think this is a competition that we take for granted. It's not just a competition between Austin and the Valley and Boston and North Carolina Triangle. It's a global competition. And with the current state of affairs in Washington and the, you know, we're overly security, for good reason, we're scared of terrorism. But I think those are the kind of things that could threaten the long run viability of the Valley. I think the Valley is still the best place in the world to attract talent. But what I, what I talked about is, you know, if China ups their take by 5%, if India ups its take by 4%, if Canadians take another 6%, if the Australians take 7%, add up those numbers and that competition becomes ever more uh, difficult. And it could damp down the innovative spirit that's for so long uh, permeated this valley. Uh, a year ago, we were all talking about green technology. In 12 months, has that vanished or is that still viable? I think the valley is smart to get on the green technology bandwagon. I think it's where technology is going. One of the things I talked about today that I talk about in my new book, The Great Reset, is that what we're going through is a fundamental reset of our economy, of our technology, and of the way we live. What saved us from the Great Depression wasn't just new innovation. It was this invention of a new way of life called suburbia, where people could go out, like my mom and dad, buy a suburban home, fill it with appliances, have to buy two cars to get around, and television stuff powered our industrial engine. I think we're, inventing a new, we're at the cusp of inventing a new lifestyle today. Yes, it's greener, but it's more clustered. It's people living maybe closer to downtown or their suburbs reconfiguring. A little bit more pedestrian friendliness. Uh, taking faster trains like the high-speed rail I'm going to build in California. And I think one of the things that the Bay Area and the Valley is known for is, is fusing technology with lifestyle. So I think it's green technology plus. What are those technologies that will change our homes, allow us to live in smaller but more effective, more connected homes that, that are going to power our new vehicles, both cars and bikes and, and trains? Inventing that new lifestyle, you know, it, we're still early in the reset. These are 10 to 20 year processes. But I think orienting the valley around green plus new lifestyle, that's where the real advances are going to come over the next decade or two.